hello. I am Nicole Miller. I am the District 2 Coordinator for the IATSC Women's Committee, and I am here with Terry Hendrick. Of course, as you can see from her background, a member of the Animation Guild, Local 839 in the IATSC. The person who nominated you said that you have been leading a strong, successful fight for your fellow color designers for many years. And you've established and co-chair a color design committee, which I think you're going to tell us a little bit about, and continually develop creative and brilliant ways to promote the needs of fellow craft members and consistently supports local 839 as a whole. She does all of this while raising young children and working full time. And finally, the last great thing that was said, I am in awe of Terry. She inspires me to work harder for my union kin. Great stuff. So hello, Terry. Hello. And welcome. And so we'll start with where you all began and what was your first experience like when you joined the ITSC and what brought you to it? All right. Uh, I ended up uh, in IOTC when I started working in animation, which wasn't something I expected to initially do. Um, I went to college, you know, as uh, studying illustration and um, doing kind of traditional kind of illustrative arts. And, um, but I needed, you know, steady work and living in Los Angeles, I just naturally found myself in the animation industry. And um, my very first job was actually not union, um, but then the next production that I was hired after that was union and just by being um, then hired onto it, I then um, what became a member of the Animation Guild. And how has the union shaped your career? Um, well, I mean, one aspect has been trying to continue to land um, union um, jobs um, since not everything in animation um, is union yet. Mm -hmm. And um, on, on top of that, as I've become more involved and active in the last couple of years, I've found that through my involvement, I've become kind of gotten more job references that way um, or job leads um, because of, you know, other members have recognized me through my union work. So, okay, so how about something that's like a situation or a challenge perhaps that you experienced, something that has happened maybe recently that you were involved in. Tell us a little about that maybe and a specific type of example and how it turned out, the outcome of the situation, if you could. Sure, um, well, probably it would be worth um, telling the story of how I ended up forming the Color Designer Committee within the Animation Guild. So I think it was like the summer of 2017, myself and my partner were both offered positions on the same production, although the positions were slightly different ones in within the design department. Um, uh, he was offered color design and I was offered background paint. And through our previous experience, just working in the design department, our assumption was like, oh, all these positions are valued the same. You know, we're each kind of part of this like bigger picture. Um, and so we had no like conception that they would be valued like less than the other. Um, but when we got the offers and then checked with the union office to see like, oh, is this correct? And unfortunately they had to tell us like, yes, that's actually what is in the contract. And it really didn't sit well with me. It just did, it didn't make sense based on my experiences. Um, and the more I kind of dug into it, I discovered that the position color design had, had been and is currently a female dominated role within the animation guild one of very few in um, our industry. And because of that, it's um, the only uh, kind of lower paying position within the design department, whereas all the other crafts, there's like five in total, um, get the same kind of coverage within our contract. And uh, once I discovered that, I, I you know had to work with our union leadership to figure out like, okay, well, how can we, you know, change this, um, you know, this needs to be resolved. Uh, you know, this is an issue of essentially pay discrimination that has never been corrected. So um, then I found myself on our negotiating committee in 2018. Um, and that's where I, you know, actively began advocating um, for, you know, the craft of color design and working um, with fellow members within a committee. And um, I've continued that work since then. Um, I, 
participated again in our uh, negotiations, which just ended earlier this year. And um, in this round of negotiations, we did see um, slightly more um, significant gains. Um, specifically, we were able to close the pay gap by one third, which yes, there's still a pay gap, but at least we're moving in the right direction. So besides working on this issue within my local, I've also been working um, with members in uh, the Hollywood Basic locals uh, to address pay inequity since several live action crafts are also experiencing something very similar to what color designers and animation are experiencing. And we're hoping by you know working together, we'll be able to push this issue to the forefront um, in our you know, future negotiations. And um, I know one agenda item we're trying to kind of work on now uh, with IOTC is conducting a pay equity study throughout all the locals and I, I think, and um, to study as many crafts as possible um, so we can get a really full understanding of like what's happening like on the ground. We found like we've had to kind of tackle this from different angles that it's not just about what's happening in the negotiating room that we also have to kind of create an awareness campaign with members about what's happening with this craft and help you know others understand what people in this position actually do and so that they can appreciate why they need uh, to achieve pay equity. And um, so some of uh, what I've worked with with the committee is um, creating like a social media presence. Um, we have kind of a committee uh, sort of social media pages that we run on, on um, you know Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, it's uh, I believe at color design 839 and um, see and yeah on top of that you know um, working with members at individual studios to try and advocate for change because we actually have had um, you know a few instances of uh, color designers actually gaining full uh, pay equity um, at least you know on, on their paycheck um, by uh, having these dis kind of one-on-one -on -one discussions with kind of the studio and line producer, um, so we're hoping you know to by creating this change sort of on the local level, then we can build it up and solidify it in our contract at negotiations. What is the most satisfying part of your job? What you do. And not maybe just in color design, but you know, I know you're also a shop steward if you want to talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so my day job, I actually work as a color supervisor, which entails supervising both color designers and background painters. And I would say the most satisfying part of my job is um, just working closely with talented artists and inspiring them to create kind of the best work possible. Um, so uh, yeah, and on top of that, I, I am a shop steward at my studio and um, it's also kind of, uh, I guess, satisfying to be able to help people out just answering simple kind of, uh, usually simple questions involving like their union benefits and, you know, any um, contract issues that might come up and connecting them to a union representative at the office. Um, and yeah, I think uh, because of my, role on the production as a supervisor and then be, being active in the union, it does seem to kind of rub off on others and inspire them to then become involved with the union themselves. And finally, what do you wish more people knew about you? Sort of, I guess, a hidden passion of mine is uh, creating like fine art paintings. Um, it, yeah, it's something I do on my free time. Um, if anyone wants to check out um, well, my social media handles for that are Color Sorceress, that might be easier, <laughs> um, or my website, which is uh, my name, Terry, T-E-R-I-H-C dot art.